and welcome back to another Doctor Who Robert Harrop Collector figurine review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at another limited edition hand-painted figurine statue from the earlier figure releases in the line, this time Scaroth, last of the Jagroth from the fourth Doctor story, The City of Death. It is limited edition 2300 and it's currently available now on the Robert Harrop website for £59.99. So if you're interested by what I show you in this review, I definitely recommend checking it out in the description below. Firstly, take a look at the packaging that this figure comes in. Once again, exactly the same layout to all of the other Robert Harrop figures that I've reviewed previously so far in this line. So at the front, we do get the Doctor Who logo along the BBC one in the top corner. We get the diamond design once again with the star field almost going off to the side. And then at the bottom, we get the Robert Harrop logo along with the limited edition hand-painted figurine. On the sides of the box, we don't really get anything whatsoever. Just the Doctor Who logo in a faded fashion. And then exactly the same on the opposite side and the back as well. Some company information at the bottom. Nothing at the base. And once again, at the the top of the box we do get a sticker which reads exactly the same information once again however this time around we do also have the unique unit number for this figure mine of which being 56 out of 300 and as per usual this box is made of corrugated cardboard ensuring that the figure on the inside is protected when in transit as per usual, on the inside of the box, we do also have a double layer of packaging. Once again, we do have a polystyrene case that has on the very top a sticker that once again reads the unique identity number for this figure. And then on the inside, we just get this simple template when the figure can sit inside along with this dust sheet as well, ensuring that the figure doesn't actually get any dust or anything on it. As per usual, the figure on the inside of the box does also come accompanied with the Certificate of Authenticity, stylized once again with the diamond design and the Doctor Who logo. And of course, at the very bottom, we do get an image of Scarf from the story, along with certified by Robert Harrop and the unique number handwritten on. And then on the back of the certificate, we do get a little bit of information about the City of Death, as well as Robert Harrop. And as this is one of the older figures in the line, it does also come packaged with a small little stand that once again reads Doctor Who Scarf and Limited Edition with the number 13 on the back, and that does just sit next to the figure, giving a little label went on display. Taking a look at the statue itself, this is of course Scaroth, last of the Jagoth from the story The City of Death, which is a rather iconic story from the classic series of Doctor Who, along with the fourth Doctor wearing his giant rainbow scarf as per usual. Now, the actual character of Scaroth, last of the Jagoth, is a little bit of an unusual one because he generally looks a little bit weird. He is basically a normal human, as you can see, on the normal body, and then as soon as you get to the head, I don't have a clue what's going on. It's literally a giant sort of orb of moss with one eye in the middle it's definitely very stereotypical doctor who but also a rather unusual unique alien at the same time and i think that for that reason that's probably why robert harrop have actually decided to do this figure because it is very unusual to look at but also at the same time is rather iconic even if you haven't seen the city of death Taking a look at the base of the figure now, the shoes have been done in this rather nice tan colour with a few orange speckle designs in there as well as the sculpt of the different pieces of shoe nicely standing out. We do also have the sole of the shoe there nicely painted in it, almost dark grey colour to represent the shoes actually standing on the floor. And then as we go up we do have the suit trousers at the very bottom there with not really too much detail going on as they are normally quite tailored and fit and slim to the body. Shoe crease there at the very bottom ankle of the figure and we do have a few creases on the upper half of the trousers as well that have been rather nicely brought out with a slightly darker paint app. The upper half of the trousers, we do also have the sculpting of the flies that have rather nicely been engraved into the actual trousers themselves. On the upper half of the suit now, we do have the waistcoat in the middle that has once again been painted with exactly the same details. I do also have the sculpting of the middle of the waistcoat nicely done along the buttons running down the side. However, these haven't been painted, they've just been sculpted on. And I did look at a few images of the costume from the story, and it does seem like they are a very similar colour to the suit itself. However, just for the actual sort of more interesting design of this figure, it may be nice to have a slightly different paint tap on those just to make them stand out a little bit more and give the figure a bit more variety. And taking a look at the top of the suit we do also have the buttons sculpted on there as well on the collar of the actual coat nicely done also and then we also have the pockets on either side as well that have been nicely sculpted protruding from the actual suit itself. Taking a look at the shoulders once again we get that similar crease design that has been really nicely done along with that continuation of a stitching line running down the spine of the jacket along the way that it actually separates at the bottom with this left piece actually being raised above the right piece much like how a suit would be in real life. The suit has almost been given this slightly dirty wash around the sides which really nicely brings out some of the impact of the creases giving a little bit more detail to a rather not necessarily eye-catching suit because it must be said it is pretty much all one colour and there isn't really too much to talk about. 
the lower half of the suit jacket we do have the three buttons of the cuffs of the jacket nicely sculpted on once again with no pain taps and we do also have the shirt underneath slightly poking out there that has been rather nicely painted on and once again absolutely no paint bleed on this whatsoever so i am impressed with that and it's one of the benefits of having each individual figure hand painted because the quality control is always pretty high hands they've been sculpted in a clenched position as you can see with the four fingers nicely detailed along the thumb at the opposite side as well and on this side we do in fact have the ring that's once again been rather nicely sculpted along with a gold and green paint app put over this to give a really nice amount of detail other arm now once again pretty much exactly the same details of the buttons nicely sculpted on once again and the shirt underneath poking out in the black color and the opposite hand has just been sculpted in a similar way with the four fingers nicely individually sculpted top half of the jacket now we finally have a color that isn't cream it's about time we do have a handkerchief that has been rather nicely sculpted into the right hand side pocket we have a few creases and things in there and that's been done in a rather nice bright blue color and this corresponds with almost the cravat or scarf piece there but ruffled and a little bit confused so i do quite like that and once again we do have a little bit of a lighter blue highlight applied to the top of this to give it a rather nice shimmer almost like a velvet material effect in the middle of this we do almost have this gold badge type piece which is holding the cravat in place which i do quite like and once again this has been painted rather well and once again this is completely surrounded by the black shirt underneath which is poking out of the suit below which has these rather big collar pieces sculpted all the way around to the back of the figure as well which once again has been rather nicely and sharply painted Finally, going on to the most detailed part of the figure, it is, of course, that rather unusual looking head. So this has been painted rather nicely and sculpted rather nicely as well, in fact. So we do have this rather nice curl pattern going all the way around the side, once again, making it look like sort of a plant or moss with a lot of depth towards it. As you can see, we do have this darker paint app below this, creating a little bit of shadow, especially towards the back half here, where we have this lighter paint app applied over the top to bring out some of those curls and sort of lines even more, which I do quite like. The front of the head, we do have the sculpt of these rather unusual sort of tendril sections poking out the side once again i don't really know what these are they just look a little bit weird i can recall them sort of moving in the actual story but i do like the way that these have been individually sculpted to actually protrude from the head because this does give it a little bit more detail and i do love the way that we also have the eye painted in the very middle there as well once again very sharply done we do have the green iris in the very middle along the rather nice black section and this has been given a rather nice varnish effect to make it look glossy almost like it's real and sort of staring right at you much like how it's doing right now through the camera viewfinder so yeah it does look a rather sort of creepy design but also at the same time almost like a stereotypical 70s alien so effectiveness of the different shades of green on the paint apps means that when this figure is in different lights it does in fact vary in what it looks like when on display so at different points in the day this will in fact look a little bit darker than in some points of the day it'll look a little bit lighter so to finish off the figure we do of course have the base which once again has been individually sculpted to represent a scene from the actual city of death this time round, i do believe this is probably a paving stone or something from France. It's not exactly the most interesting display in the world, but that said, they couldn't really have done anything more really with it. So yeah, we do have some rather nice shaded details on there with different gradients of grey, as well as the actual paving stones nicely sculpted into the base. And then as per usual, we do have the white trim running along the side, linked into the base of the figure, which does have this rather nice material display at the bottom, meaning that when it's on display, it doesn't move too much, doesn't cause friction on the actual surface that it's displayed on. You also have the sticker, which once again reads exactly the same details along the unique unit number, once again, mine being 56 out of 300. And look at the actual stance of the figure now. As you can see, it hasn't really got too much going on because you can't really put Scaroth in a dynamic position that I know of. I can't really remember him having that many dynamic pauses from the actual story. He literally just looks like a man with a green head that wanders around, which is exactly what it looks like here. So I think the actual sculpt itself is quite basic. It just looks like sort of a human waiting for a bus or something like that. It may have been nice to have a few display changes, maybe have the gun or the pistol or whatever he has in the actual story sculpted into his hand however i don't know if that would have been too small and intricate that the detail on that and the pieces may have snapped off or something but it may have been nice to have it sort of being held across his chest or something like that in kind of a james bond style of position like how he poses on the posters or something just to make it look a little bit more interesting because that's it at the moment we don't have too much going on but at the same time i can't really think of any other alternative pose for him because he is basically just scaroff and he just kind of just stands there doing what he wants for Really. So yeah, overall, it is a rather nice eye-catching figure, but not the most exciting one in the world. 
something a little bit of a comparison now to some of the other Scaroth Last of the Jagoroths in my collection, which is rather amusing because it's meant to be the last one, yet yeah, there's three right now in front of the camera, all of which looking rather unusual. So as you can see, we have the Biff Bang Pow one that I know people are probably going to bully, but I quite like the Biff Bang Pow line. I like the novelty behind them, okay? Yes, they look unusual, but still, I think that they've definitely gone with the Robert Harrop figure, a slightly more cream design suit. As you can see, both the Biff Bang Pow one and the character options one are a lot more brighter, and a lot more of a vibrant white. However, I still think that the detailing on the head of the Robert Harrop one is far more superior to the character options one and the Biff Bang Pow one because both of the other ones tend to look rather plasticky. However, the Scaroff one on the Robert Harrop actually looks quite flesh-like, but almost a green flesh, and does look quite believable to what is seen in the actual images from the story. So yeah, for that reason, once again, probably Robert Harrop have made the best Scaroff representation in my collection. So you now I have a lovely sort of collection of Scaroffs. With Overall, for the Doctor Who Robert Harrop limited edition hand-painted figurine statue of Scaroff, last of the Jagoroth from the fourth Doctor story, The City of Death, I think that this is a rather nice design. I think that Scaroff have been released numerous amount of times in different merchandise. We've had the figurine collection version, we've had the actual character options 5-inch figure version, so he does seem to be quite an iconic villain, and the City of Death does in fact tend to be a story that is quite iconic. I think partly because it's set in Paris, and I think that it's one of the first ever Doctor Who stories to actually go on location to a different country. Quote me if I'm wrong on that, but I think it is, probably for those reasons, a rather popular story. But that said, at the same time, Time, this figure is by no means the most impressive in the world because it is essentially a man wearing a suit with a green head and if you want a man with a suit with a green head then this is definitely a figure for you because I think that Scaroth is a rather interesting looking villain and if you're a fan of the City of Death and sort of the Fourth Doctor era and if you maybe have the Fourth Doctor Robert Harrop statue already this will be a really nice figure to complement that. It may also be nice to see a Fourth Doctor uh, to go alongside this figure from the actual City of Death with the the larger scarf and the big massive collar, maybe with the childish grin, or maybe even holding a packet of jelly babies, because I do know that we have also a canine coming out soon as well, so that will also be quite a nice figure to accompany this one. So yeah, if you've been interested by what I've shown you in this review, as I said at the very start, this figure is priced at £59.99, so that could be classed as a little bit on sort of the more expensive side. However, this is a part of a more exclusive kind of collector's line of figure that is a limited edition and is hand-painted, so you're kind of paying for that novelty to have something that is possibly going to be quite rare in the future. So yeah, overall, a rather nice release, but once again, not the most impressive in the world. So thanks for watching this video, hope you've enjoyed it, and I shall see you all in more Doctor Who product reviews at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching, and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.